In a world created by Mike Dell, I guess you would call it Mike Dell's world. And good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the case may be, this is Mike. And of course, Mike Dell's world. This is number 360. I guess I, ho- I hope I don't go round and round in circles, but I've been kind of known to do that. <laughs> anyway, well, let's see. It's the 22nd of March, 2021. And uh, yeah, I know I did a quick update and promised to update you more later, but uh, I didn't get round to it. Uh, in fact, I'm a little short of round to it here lately. Been pretty busy and uh, lots of cool stuff going on. Of course, uh, I did get my cataract surgeries on you know, both eyes, not at the same time. And uh, I am now seeing, for the most part, glasses free. Uh, still got to wear readers, cheaters, whatever, to uh, read the computer and, and whatnot. And they may have a little bit of secondary cataracts going on. That's a common thing where they just laser a, laser a little hole somewhere. And I don't know. I don't understand it, but... Uh, I may have a little touch of that, which will be taken care of Whoops, pretty soon. Didn't mean to bang the microphone there if you heard that. And I don't understand this stupid heater in here. Of course, it's been in the 60s. And no matter what I set the heater on, it either goes to 80 degrees in here or it's, you know, 62. (laughs) So I don't know. Why that heater is now deciding it wants to be unstable, I guess because the temperature is so unstable. Outside, maybe. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the big deal is I got the uh, eye surgeries. And uh, like I said, seeing a lot better than I used to. can wear my cool sunglasses instead of my prescription ones. Because if I try to wear the prescriptions one, prescription ones, it's like looking through the bottom of a bottle. <laughs> so... They don't work no more, but that's a good thing. Uh, Here in about a month, I'll go in and uh, get my final prescription if I need it uh, for glasses. I probably won't, even if, you know, you could probably tweak it so it's a little bit better. But you know what? I'm going to enjoy not having to wear glasses other than for uh, reading for a while anyway and see how well I get along. But, uh, yeah, it's been a long time since uh, I've been able to wake up in the middle of the night and look at the alarm clock and see what time it is. And I can actually read my uh, Apple Watch, even some of the smaller text on it without the glasses. I can read my phone, certain apps anyway, uh, without the glasses. Uh, the computer, you know, certain things I can read without the computer, so or without the glasses uh, on the computer. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Certainly way better than it was. Again, you know, my prescription glasses, you know, look like looking through the bottom of bottles. <laughs> you know, Coke bottles or whatever, I guess that's what they call them. But they weren't that bad. But, uh, yeah, definitely not useful to me anymore. So I'll probably uh, get some uh, progressive readers you know, so it's clear on the top and progressive on the, you know, you know, like bifocals, just so, you know, when I'm working, I don't have to keep taking my glasses off, put them on, take them off, put them on, take them off, that kind of thing. And, you know, but as far as driving, I can see the dashboard. My night driving is so much better than it used to be. That's actually pretty amazing to me because I was pretty much worthless driving at night for probably the last three, four years. You know, I could do it. And but it took a lot more concentration and had to be really careful about glare and to adjust the mirrors just so. And if it was raining or snowing, I was dangerous. So, but uh, now not so much. I haven't driven at night in the rain yet. I have to try that next time it rains. Go for a little tootle and see how it is. But uh, I think it's going to be a lot, a lot better. The other thing we're doing is uh, we're redoing our kitchen been talking about it for a couple of years and never really uh, got started on it. Well, we finally got started on it, took all the cabinets out except for where the sink is. Uh, was it, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago anyway, and 
got all those hauled off to the dump and and uh, got the new cabinets coming tomorrow uh, sometime. They're delivering the cabinets to the garage and got the flooring in. And a friend of mine, same guy that helped me with the shed here, is going to help me do the floors. So uh, Wednesday night, I'm going to take the cabinets or the last cabinet and the sink and all the plumbing out. And uh, so we'll be sinkless for a little while. Hopefully not too long because, like I said, the cabinets are here. So basically we'll get the flooring done and got to do some wall painting and wallpaper removal and that kind of thing. And then put the new cabinets in and then measure and get the countertops coming and uh, however long it takes to get the countertops and and uh, plumb in the new sink, and we'll be back in business. Uh, and I've got a microwave that goes under the stove hood, or the under or above the stove, and you know below the cabinet there, over the stove microwave. I guess is the right way to put that. And got one of those to install. That shouldn't be too terrible. But uh, yeah, we're gonna. Do the floors. We were going to refinish the floors that were there in the kitchen. And we had a guy come over and look to, you know, see what he'd charge to, to do the refinishing. And he says, no, that's just pine. You don't want to refinish that. You know, I always thought it was hardwood. No, it's just pine. <laughs> so it's not worth sanding and refinishing. We could have put down real wood, but uh, we're not. We're going to go over that with uh, some of that uh, thin I don't know, stuff's only like an eighth inch, eighth inch thick, but uh, some sort of, you know, floating floor. I don't know. It's like Pergo, I guess, uh, but it's not Pergo. It's some other vinyl or whatever, but it looks like wood. It's the same color as uh, what was down there, only it's going to be all nice and smooth and and uh, somewhat shiny and, and uh, definitely worthy. So, yeah, hopefully by... Uh, I'm still hoping by the end of uh, March we'll have our kitchen back together. Kathy will like that. She's been bugging about getting the kitchen done, and then, you know, she's had all those surgeries, and, you know, we've had a lot of that kind of thing going on, so it's good to get that done. Uh, let's see, other things. Uh, you know, work's been busy. It's, that's good. Like I said, always better to be Busy than bored. I've uh, been playing around with the ham radio stuff as, as usual as well. And I, I dug out an old computer. And this, this kind of gave me a trip down memory lane. But uh, and I thought this thing was pretty new. Yeah, little did I know. <laughs> but I thought it was pretty new. It was a Dell Dimension E520, I think. I don't know, something like that. And, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, that, that can't be that old. It's a Pentium D. Never even heard of it. But it's a Pentium D chip with a whopping two gigabytes of RAM. No, whopping one megabyte or one gigabyte of RAM. And then I expanded it to two. Well, it kind of died. And, and I didn't realize how long ago until I realized, oh, that was before I got my iMac, which is now... 10 years old. <laughs> so this computer is at least 14 and something had died just about the time I got my iMac. And now the iMac is sort of dying. It's overheating. I'm having some trouble with a couple of computers of mine overheating. My iMac uh, now just randomly shuts itself off probably for heat. And I got an old HP laptop that uh, does that as well. So I don't know. I want to set up a Windows machine because, you know, that old HP laptop, the only thing I use it for is programming my ham radio stuff. And uh, I was going to use it in place of the iMac for the uh, station computer. And it won't stay running long enough. It'll still run for... Yeah, 20 minutes or whatever. That's plenty to program a uh, you know a radio, but not long enough to do anything meaningful. So uh, I ordered a, a, a refurbished Lenovo Think Center. It's a, I don't know, little 
compact uh, desktop PC, and that'll, that should work pretty good because, you know, most ham radio software is Windows anyway, and I haven't had a Windows machine of any great consequence other than, like I said, that laptop that I use exclusively to program my radios. Uh, I haven't had, really had a Windows machine in, well, since I got that iMac, really. So that's been over 10 years. So I figured it's time. You know, it was Windows Vista, I think, that machine came with. And then I upgraded it to Windows 7. And I don't think it ever went anywhere past Windows 7. I've never had Windows 8. Uh, I've used some Windows 8 machines, but I never had Windows 8. But I've had, you know, I've used Windows 10 on a couple machines. And it's okay. I don't really have anything particularly against Windows, but... So I'm going to make sure that, that the ham radio computer is going to be exclusively for that kind of thing. I'm not going to put all my email stuff on it. I'm not going to put you know much on it. I'm going to try to keep that as clutter-free as possible, and I'll put you know ham radio-related stuff, you know, like APRS, not APRS, uh, like uh, oh, what is that? Well, I'm going to do my packet stuff with it. I'll do. Uh, uh, FL Digi, you know, for the digital modes, put that on there. I might get some rig control software because it would be kind of cool to uh, do remote control on my HF rig. So when I'm out of town, I can operate remote, you know, fire it up and well, at least listen, but uh, possibly you know, do both. So that's another thought, but you know, Windows just is much more flexible for just the ham radio stuff. <laughs> Cause you know, it, you know, as far as a daily driver machine and you know, fully a Mac guy, but uh, yeah, it'd be fun to play with it. Uh, see what's happened in the Windows world in the last 10 years. Cause I'll actually pay attention a little bit. I understand the whole virus thing isn't as bad as it was, uh, or, you know, any worse than the internet in general, I guess. So, because, you know, Macs aren't absolutely immune, but it's not too common. But I'm going to, you know, not be installing stuff and clicking on stuff that I don't want, you know, that I don't need to click on. I'll just sort of keep it pretty generic and, and focused on on the ham radio software and, you know, some, maybe some mapping stuff. I, I won't, uh, probably won't even log into Google or, or uh, Facebook or anything like that on it. Uh, just like I said, just be my uh, my communication machine with uh, ham radio and maybe other similar things. But nothing, nothing crazy. But if you have any suggestions, if you're hams, uh, I know some of you are that listen to me. If you have any suggestions for some good programs to try, uh, I do have a single link. Uh, interface for digital HF modes and I do have a DV dongle for D star, which I'll put on there, of course. And, uh, I'm thinking about maybe getting into, uh, some of the other digital modes, but we'll see. I don't want to do FT eight or FT four. I've, I've got all the stuff to do it on my iMac and I've played with it and it's a similar experience to watching paint dry. There's no actual communication taking place. So, you know, it's kind of cool to rack up countries. That, that was fun for a little bit. But, you know, after that, it, it just literally was like, okay, click, ignore, 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 click, ignore, ignore, <laughs> and watch your logbook fill up. So I uh, wasn't overly impressed with that. I can't, I, you know, when I do ham radio, I want to communicate. So I might look into getting a, a CW reader program that works with that sound card interface. And that way I can uh, maybe uh, get into CW again. I do have a key around here somewhere so I can actually send it. And I can, re you know, I can listen and write it down, but it's easier if you just let the computer do it, uh, the reading. <laughs> I'm lazy, you know, I'll admit it. But... Uh, that's Morse code for those that aren't, aren't familiar with with ham radio and such things. CW, continuous wave, that's what it stands for. And, uh, 
that's what uh, that's what we call Morse code in the ham world. Most a lot of people don't do it, or you don't have to learn it anymore f- to get your ham license. When I got mine, of course you did, but you don't uh, these days. It's the no code license. Nothing wrong with that in particular. Yeah, I had to take a drink there, but. So I might get into that again. It's been a long time since I've played with with Morse code. See if I remember any of it. But yeah, so this little uh, ThinkPad or ThinkPad ThinkStation. Uh, it's the it's a little dinky computer, I guess. Uh, it's probably just a laptop in a box, uh, you know, a desktop box. Kind of looks that way. I think all computers are that way anymore. Or not all, but a good portion of them. But uh, one unique thing about this is it has serial ports. I think it has two of them. You know, I didn't even think they did that anymore. This this refurbished. I'm not sure how old it is. It's got a, a core core i5 or whatever. It's the same chipset that's in my uh, relatively new iMac here. You know, I don't have an M1 I, or not iMac, uh, Mac mini. I don't have an M M1 Mac Mini. This one's a i is it i5? I don't know. Whatever that is. Uh, it's the Intel. And it's they still make them. So it's not you know antique. Comes with eight gig of RAM and uh, I think a 512 SSD. And it's got an extra drive bay, so I'll be able to pop in these hard drives I res- rescued from the uh, from the uh, old Dell computer that. Went out to the dumpster tonight, so <laughs> I couldn't revive it. I guess I didn't tell you that. Finished telling you that story. I think we're going around in circles. This is episode three hundred and sixty, so I got to go around in circles. Yeah, it had uh, three hard drives in it. Uh, it had a two hundred and fifty spinning drive. Well, all spinning drives, but it had a two hundred and fifty, uh, another two hundred and fifty, or was it a one hundred and sixty? I'm not sure. Gig, and then it had a terabyte. And that was, well, that was whiz-bang back when I put that in there. And I'm sure there's some interesting stuff on there. Maybe I'll find the the missing uh, episodes 1 through, uh, I think, 38, 37 of the Benzoid Report, which is what this podcast started out as. If I do find those, I will repost those with approximate dates and we can all go back and enjoy my uh, first episodes of podcasting, but I kind of doubt that they're there, but I'm going to try to dig those out. So I do have a, a, a place to put the, the, uh, those drives and explore them once I uh, get that Windows machine together. So that might be, uh, that may be worthy. We'll see. But uh, yeah. So that's that's what's been going on here. Nothing too earth shattering. Lots of deliveries coming. I uh, actually did find some ammunition for my uh, handguns, uh, which is on order. So that should be here in the next week or so. Uh, yeah, not that I want to go shooting anytime soon, but it's always good to have some on hand. Boy, the prices have gone up, though. Holy crud. I was... Uh, looking at some boxes of ammo that I had left and a box of 40 Smith and Wesson. That's, you know, 10 millimeter shorts, <laughs> but they call it 40 Smith and Wesson. Uh, the 40 Smith and Wesson for 50 rounds back whenever I bought these was $9 and 99 cents. And now it's somewhere around $50 for 50 rounds. It's around a buck a, a round. Uh, it's a little ridiculous. It's a lot ridiculous, but you know, I needed to get some. I got some bulk, so you know, it wasn't that expensive. It wasn't as expensive as it could have been, but and uh, so we'll see. Uh, I don't think I'll need to be buying any. I don't plan on going shooting too much, but you know, I just want to have a little practice ammo on on hand anyway. Good stuff, and. Jeez, I'm trying to think. Yeah, not not too much going on. I, I'm going to have a couple of themed shows that I, I want to work on. Uh, I want to talk about some uh, history-related things from around Traverse City that 
I've been uh, seeing, you know, on Facebook and, and other places, which I don't frequent that much, but you know, give me some ideas of uh, some certain historical things I want to talk about for the Traverse City area. So if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, that's going to be coming up. Uh, I did watch the documentary that was done, I want to see say 20 years ago maybe, but it was a PBS documentary on the building of the Mackinac Bridge. Of course, you guys have probably all seen the, that footage, but uh, that, that was interesting. I always like that history-related stuff, uh, especially, you know, when it's local around here. But, uh, you know, and I had probably seen that back when it came out, but uh, it was cool to see that again, flipping through YouTube. And uh, so it's just amazing, you know. And, and I've been seeing them advertising on TV lately, uh, the Mackinac Bridge Authority selling off chunks of that grating because, you know, they go in there and replace those grates now and again when they need it. And, and they pull those out and they auction off the grates. And they had one, it was a 40-foot by five foot wide section of that grating from the bridge that they replaced. It uh, was on auction and I forget what it got bid up to, but it was some, you know, it's for some charity. So it's cool. And then they're selling the smaller chunks. Eh, I might get a, you know, see how much they go for in the auctions, but I might get a little chunk of that to hang on the wall. It might be fun. You know, they have the, they have one by two foot or three by two Maybe that's it. Three three foot by two foot chunks that they're they're selling of that uh, steel grating. That might look good on my wall here in the in the office slash studio. Uh, of course, everybody's going. Well, you got that hanging on your wall. Well, it's part of the Mackinac Bridge. <laughs> I got a bridge to sell you. Anyway, all right. Well, everybody have a good however long it is until we talk again. And yeah, hey, get a hold of me. I, you know, if we haven't conversed in a while or if you're new to this and, and all that, uh, you know, give me a holler. I am actively podcasting over at podcasthelpdesk.com and at podcastinsider.com. Those two shows uh, go yeah most of the time every week. Well, Podcast Insider goes every week, no matter what, come rain or shine. Uh, podcast help desk some somewhat less than once a week, but it's it's more regular than this one, and sometimes I pretty regular on this one. So you just never know. And I've been really resisting the urge to start another podcast, which I know would end in me not doing it. So I, I'll just keep resisting that urge, and uh, we'll just put out any of my creativeness if I ever come across any on this feed. I said I've got a couple history ones I want to explore and talk about, and and maybe this summer we'll get uh, Jim Farley up here and we'll do a uh, "What's Up with That" episode, which we haven't done in a really long time. And I don't know, got some surprises coming too. On podcast help desk, I actually got an interview uh, coming up. Uh, it's going to be super geeky for podcasters, but uh, it'll be way cool because. This guy can explain things about podcasting, the technical side of it. So like I said, it's way geeky. Uh, hot namespace talk, as Adam Curry says. Go podcasting! <laughs> uh, I know Adam doesn't mind me stealing that or that. Anyway, everybody have a good, however long it is. I said that before, didn't I? But then didn't shut up. So now I'm going to shut up. Catch you later.